HBO's new Watchmen series is finally here and we're still reeling with questions from the premiere. While we're waiting patiently for more of the story to be revealed, now is as good a time as any to dig into the crazy amount of easter eggs hidden and not so hidden within the episode's 61 minute runtime. Before we dive in though, be sure to drop down and subscribe to keep up to date on all our videos and if you want us to cover more from the Watchmen series, smash that like button. The first bit of visual homage comes at the end of the episode's opening scene when the young boy who survived the bombing is stood in front of the opening title and we see a splash of blood on his face, a clear call to the iconic bloody comedian badge and it won't be the last one we see. A small detail that firmly plants us in the world of the source material is the use of electrically powered vehicles, which appears to have been maintained in the more modern setting of the show. A huge part of the series so far is the return of the Rorschach mask and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. The series premiere set up a white supremacist cult, the 7th Cavalry, as our big bad and the group uses Rorschach's journal and his image as both a beacon of their ideology and a creepy disguise. That brings us right into a great easter egg for the Rorschach character when Don Johnson's Judd tells Tim Blake Nelson's Looking Glass to quote, pull your face on. Throughout the comic, Rorschach only refers to his mask as his face and this was a fun little detail to drop in. Now I think we're all still dying to see which, if any more characters from the original story will show up and thankfully it didn't take long for the series premiere to show us that Dr. Manhattan is still alive and still on Mars for the past 30 plus years. The show also quickly confirms that Vietnam is still the 51st state in the US and that Robert Redford is in fact still the president with his predecessor Nixon now a part of Mount Rushmore. The comedian's iconic yellow button is arguably brought up a number of times but the most obvious example is while Angela is teaching a class how to make mooncakes. The bloodied eye here is also a nice touch. This scene is a perfect opportunity to talk about clocks, Watchmen's other visual anchor throughout the book. It's also no coincidence that the 7th Cavalry uses the sound of a clock as its eerie chant. <laughs> The Watchmen comic's bizarre ending is paid a major homage when the world stops for a moment while squids literally fall from the sky in a weird rainstorm that now seems to be some sort of everyday occurrence. Surely this is a side effect from the events at the end of the comic itself, but for now it still remains a mystery. The Minutemen were the first team of vigilante heroes that came before the Watchmen, and in the show their story is being portrayed in a dramatized TV series of their own called American Hero Story. And we actually see a huge ad for the show on a flying dirigible, which was a curiously unexplained detail within Alan Moore and David Gibbons comic, which flew around with various advertisements throughout. Now we don't yet know if Jeremy Irons is in fact playing THE Adrian Veidt, but if he is, there appears to be some misinformation floating around as we see a glimpse of a newspaper declaring him dead. I'm still very confused about all of his scenes to be honest, so let's just keep our fingers crossed for answers in episode 2. When we make our way inside Judd Crawford's office, we find Angela drinking out of an owl mug, which is an obvious reference to Watchmen's Night Owl character, but we also get a more coy shot of Under the Hood, the memoir of the very first Night Owl, Hollis Mason. While interrogating a suspected member of the 7th Cavalry, we get this shot of a bloody pool of water seeping from underneath the door, which invokes a very similar scene from the comic where Dan and Lori break Rorschach out of prison. John Osterman, the man who would become Dr. Manhattan, comes from a family of watchmakers and watch pieces are a recurring motif in the comic because of this. Towards the end of the episode, the motif rears its head when it's revealed that the 7th Cavalry members are taking apart old watches for the dangerous synthetic lithium batteries. Later in the scene, while Angela aka Sister Knight is caught in a brawl, we see a quick flash of a dollar bill poster, one of the original Minutemen members. Although we don't run into the actual Night Owl character, we do see Archie the Owl Ship, while Judd and others are taking on the 7th Cavalry. Flying alongside Judd is Jessica Camacho's Pirate Jenny. Her alter ego name is a direct reference to the world of the Watchmen, where pirate comics were more popular than superhero comics. In one of Jeremy Irons' few scenes, he mentions that he's been working on a tragedy in five acts called The Watchmaker's Son. The play itself has no root in the source material, but it's clearly a reference to Dr. Manhattan's pre-transmogrification days as John Osterman, the son of a watchmaker. In the episode's final scene, we are brought back to its opening. We open on a silent film about a US marshal roping up a town's criminal sheriff and it ends with Judd being hanged by an old man who appears to be the young boy we saw at the beginning. This mirrored storytelling is a huge trademark of the Watchmen comic and one of a thousand reasons that it remains celebrated to this day. This was a very subtle but very Watchmen touch for the show to add in. And finally we land on a shot of Judd's badge and just before we cut to credits a drop of blood hits the badge calling to the extremely iconic bloody smiley face image but perhaps more importantly tying Judd's death to the imagery of the comedian's death in the comic. 
Judd's backstory is still murky and we're waiting to see where it all leads, but this kind of foreshadowing tells us it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Oh, and one more thing. Judd's death brings us right back to the title of the episode, It's Summer and We're Running Out of Ice. It's a lyric from a song in the musical Oklahoma titled Poor Judd is Dead. Kind of a huge spoiler if you're a big Oklahoma fan, but this also plays into how issues of the Watchmen comic were titled. They were often taken from song lyrics, poetry, Bible verses, or even quotes from Albert Einstein, and they too had fairly clear ties to the story. So there we have it, episode 1 of the highly anticipated Watchmen series is finally out, and we want to know your thoughts on the series and if you were able to catch all these little easter eggs. Hit the comments with your thoughts, while you're down there be sure to like and subscribe for more.